Hello, welcome to Church Wigan Live. My name's Neil Cook, and we're here at St. Mark's Church here in, in Wigan, and we're continuing our kind of asking the question, oh God, where are you? As we talk to people living in Wigan to see whether they've got any evidence of God moving and working in this time of lockdown. On the sofa today with me is Ruth Lemmel, and it's really good to have you. Now, Ruth, we know you're not probably, when we say a Wiganer, you're not quite a Wiganer. Do you just want to tell us, um, for the people who don't know you, a little about who you are and what do you do? Um, so, yeah, my name is Ruth. I've lived in Wigan now for over a decade, actually, uh, which is great. I love Wigan. Originally, I'm from Germany, came over to the UK um, in 2010. So, and I work for Safe Families, um, UK charity, and also for Church Wigan. So, that's me in a nutshell. Well, it's really good to have you with us today. So, as I said, the question is, we're looking, we're interested in seeing, you know, asking the real question, is God at work amongst us? Is there any evidence for it? And I don't know, you, you've, what, what's your view? Have you seen God at work at all? I would say yes, I have, um, in different aspects of my life. So what I found throughout work, but also throughout friends, is that it seems to be like throughout lockdown, people have been mobilized much, much more to help out their neighbor or somebody who's shielding. You know, just simple things like dropping a food or asking, how are you? But it seems like instead of being it really far, far away, it's really come close to the neighborhood. And it seems like people are, are very active in that, which is great. And I think it's almost like God mobilizing, um, sort of like his ground personnel a bit more. Um, within my work specifically for Safe Families, there has been an incredible move towards virtual support. So giving people a call and they have been massively supported through that. On a personal level as well, there were, there were a few things like um, throughout lockdown, um, Wigan Local Authority, um, out, of, out of very profound reasons, had to stop um, the work with Safe Families. And so that would generally mean I would be without a job. But at the same time, Safe Families was thinking about um, getting more personnel into Greater Manchester. And that was exactly at the right uh, at the same time almost. And so the, I just could move into Greater Manchester area, which is which is a, a God move, and the need is is great there. And I was really happy to move there as well. Just tell us a little bit of it. Some people might not know about Safe Families, so yeah. tell us a bit of the work that this charity. It's a Christian charity, right? Yes. Just it tell is. us a little bit about what this charity does. Um, we are basically, we're working together with local authorities, but also with, for example, schools. And there are so many people or families who are vulnerable. Um, lots of them are isolated. And of course, if they have been isolated before lockdown, they're really isolated now. If it's, for example, a family that needed, a single parent needed to flee domestic violence, for example, move out of area, they don't have a family, they don't have friends, they don't know anybody in the area. And then we are looking then and, and making the connection with a volunteer who knows the area, who is happy to support, and they're checking in with the family, see how they're doing. It's, it's basically like you would with somebody you know, you know is in a difficult situation, and you just would ring them up, say, how are you doing? Maybe as well asking, do you need any food? Or, oh, um, sometimes as well, currently it's very difficult, but trying as well to connect them with into a, a community like, for example, a church or a toddler group, which, of course, now is, is very different. So we need to have this single-person connection, that telephone call from time to time, like we all do. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I understand you, obviously, you need to keep client confidentiality and you can't talk about individual cases, but could you maybe just tell us, some, what are some of the outcomes, you know, for, for, for these families? Um, you, you, and as I think, as you've said, it's they're always, you know, there's families struggling, but particularly at the moment, you know, it's a really hard time. What, have you seen any kind of stories of success with those? What does that look like? There's, there's a really lovely story. Um, so 
I mean, on a, on a very practical thing, we're handing out food hampers a little bit like, you know, Thomas Pantry and, and St. James's, um, which is always hope and, and it really gives them hope and saying like, oh, actually, I can survive now. But we had a volunteer who was in the shielding group who um, had a little garden and he would ring uh, FaceTime um, one of the children and would talk him through on the way, show him all the things that he would walk by, like looking at the trees and maybe there was a specific plant or an animal or something like that and then would show it his garden that, that, that was there and would say like, oh, um, once we can meet up again, I, I'll, we're going to try a nettle, we, you can eat nettles and, and the child was going like, what, nettles? And um, this child had really struggled with with his behaviour, but because of the because but because of the you know the connection with the volunteer, actually his behaviour got so so good, that 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 basically they have now bonded in a friendship, and it really affected the entire family positive because um, the child didn't need to play up anymore, and um, yeah, they it just it was great. This just this little bit of support from somebody just walking around showing things really affected almost like as well to say like the mental health it got the attention it was great it was adventurous but if you think of a grander scheme nothing much happened apart from a connection somebody telling him what what they would see what they would pass by what they walk by so a lot of this is well it's big outcomes then for a family to see a a, a child growing confidence, not play up, you know, affects positively all their, um, you know, what could, you know, could affect their life positively, doesn't it? And that's just from people just spending, a, committing a little bit of time to invest in a family, is it? So yeah. it's interesting how God moves. It doesn't sound very complicated. It's not, and I think that's, that, that's us as, as the human being making things more complicated than they need to be. Um, I mean, we have as well families, and we all know, but it's, it's a little bit, you know, just a family knowing that there's somebody actually willing to, to spend time, to give that time, without even having, having engaged yet, and without even having yet, to, you know, giving that time up. They're just amazed. They, for, they, for them, that's already a spark of hope, knowing that actually somebody is willing to do that. And I think that's for all of us. Um, and that's what I really, really, really enjoy in this. And I, it's, and it's. You ask, have I seen God moving? And I think it's, it's literally like I, I like to call it the hands and feet of Jesus, and and that's literally what we're doing. And we can see how people like you and me become hands and feet of Jesus because they show that friendliness, they show the face, they give hope, they are they are light, they are connection, all of these things. So that's thank you for thank you for um, it, it's a challenge, isn't it? And but it's an encouragement to be the hands and feet because we can all be hands, you know, the hands and feet of Jesus. We can all be um, allow Jesus to work through us in these simple ways, yet profound, profoundly. So thank you. Um, has there been any time where which has caused you to doubt? So. It's very different for me. Most of my friends um, have family. Um, I'm living on my own. So um, that, is, that was very challenging in a way. And of course, you, you're asking yourself, um, how, how is it going to be specifically when it was full on lockdown and now I have a bubble? But even then, yeah, you miss your friends. And as a, as a single person, you know, you can't, um, I'm, I'm a hugger, I love giving hugs. And then you, you basically, that's completely taken off you and you're just really wondering what's going on. And at times it was really frustrating, to be honest. Um, did I doubt? It was more like wondering what God was up to. It felt at times that he was pressing a reset button for, for me in my life. And so I struggled because I was I was thinking about maybe going to an online you know online dating website um, this kind of thing. But then of course you can't meet people. Um, that might be a good thing. That might be a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> but um, what I found um, so like it took me a while. So there was lots of tension. Like I think we all felt a massive tension. But this kind of thing of suddenly discovering how close God is. 
um, it was a good time for me to discover, it wasn't easy, but to discover that even though I was alone, I never felt lonely because I felt Jesus' presence so much. And then it turned almost into like feeling like a retreat. And that turned into questioning a lot of things that I was doing, the reasons why I was doing it. Sort of like there were lots of times where I think, yes, but as a good Christian, as a good person, as a, you know, as somebody who's employed, shouldn't I be doing this, that and the other? And then, and then all of the, suddenly these all outer things were just, you know, taken away. And it was refocusing on saying like, why do I do the things that I do? What is the reason behind it? Why am I doing it? Is it because like, you know, a voice of my parents or voice of my peers or because of society? And then rediscovering actually the reasons I would say through God and through quiet time and through prayer, um, that really the sense in what I was doing. And I discovered, for example, that it was really this kind of sense of I need to focus on me and do me. Because if I use my skills, if I use who I am, and not looking outside for, um, you know, like, like for feedback, positive feedback or attention or anything of those kinds, I actually start doing the things in a, in a much different quality. I'm doing them because I, this is something I, God wants me to do as well. It, it's very satisfying suddenly because that all of the outside things fall, back, fall away. And um, I mean, I brought today um, a very famous poem, which has been very, very much the thing that carried me through, because I think it was, it was, it spoke to me so, so much and was a really massive thing. Um, and it's, I will not read the entire thing, it's just a few lines out of it. So, and I think this was really important, it became very important for me. It was, um, it's a poem by Marianne Williamson, Our Deepest Fear, it's called, um, very famous, well known. But I think this one, your, your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. And so this gave me as well the, the, the enthusiasm to, to really discover what I can do, who I am, and do it to the best of my ability. And then I saw um, how, how I could inspire other people and this is here, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And I think this is, for me, became really like the Holy Spirit shining through us to other people. And because we focus on what is it that God wants us to do? What is it that he placed inside of me? Why do I want these things? What is the sense behind it? Why do I want to do it? That this positively affects everybody else. Wow. So it's actually in this time of lockdown, which many can experience as a time of loss, has actually been for you a time to reappraise and find out what's really important. Some of these external factors, you call these structures being taken away. Yeah. And, and you can really discover what's most important. <laughs> That's really insightful. Thank you for, um, for sharing that. We're going to... Um, draw this to a close. What, what are you praying about? What are you talking to God about at the moment? I think it's, it's to continue, continue this conversation, sort of like, um, what is it that he placed inside of me and how can I partner with him in that? But also like these, um, I mean, yesterday was Mental Health Awareness Day. Um, I recently talked to a person, they have a, a refuge shelter for domestic violence and I say like they get four um, referrals in every day and they have to, and they have to basically uh, reject them because they're full. Um, I think it's, it's praying to, into, into Wigan um, that those situations are going to get better Specifically, domestic violence is huge, um, so that, that goes better. And I think as well, starting now, is to pray that we return to a renewed society which, where everybody can be included, not the old one as it was that we try at the moment to push back, but no, a renewed society, you know, where the vulnerable, the, um, the disadvantaged, the desolate, the, you know, all of the orphan, the widows, so to say, all of these ones can find a place and have a place. Amen. Well, that's a, a vision that we can all say amen to. So we're going to pray 
Can I pray for you for and into this? And I just invite people here to, um, to pray along as well. Lord, we thank you for Ruth. We thank you for this um, time of discovery um, th- for her. Lord, and, and, and as you've done for her, would you, for all of us, um, teachers, uh, leaders, into that freedom, into knowing uh, what you want us to do, how we can be your hands and feet in this world. And we pray, Lord, um, for the society, for the communities we live in. We pray for justice. We pray for righteousness. We pray for hope. We pray that those on the margins um, would, would know your blessing. Holy Spirit, come and be with us. And uh, we, we pray that blessing over Wigan and all the communities we live in. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ruth Lemmel, thank you so much for being with us um, tonight on the green sofa. We're going to finish. Um, Will and Dolores are going to come up and appropriately, I think, um, considering what we've been talking about, they're going to lead us in worship and they're going to sing the song Cornerstone. Thank you, Ruth. Over to, to Will and Dolores. Thank you. Thank you.